Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Keith Thompson. I want to talk to you guys about a, uh, a video clip that I found years ago when I was originally converted. Uh, me and the girl that I was with at the time, we uh, we were scouring the internet for videos of Christian nature, testimonies and whatnot, things to be inspired by. And Bill Wise is one of the first guys that I came upon whose story really impacted me. Now, for obvious reasons, it impacted me because it was... I mean, it was amazing. And at the time, I was a babe in Christ and I didn't know much. So it's easy to be swayed and um, to be uh, led astray by false ideologies, teachings, heresies, and just false stories in general. Stories that don't line up with scripture. And he has a, 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 very, a story that's very compelling and it's why he has so many followers and views all over YouTube. I'm going to go ahead and play a short clip of him explaining his experience and then I want to talk about it from a biblical perspective. And I got up at three o'clock in the morning just to get a glass of water and suddenly I was pulled out of my body, like being drawn up out of your body. And I found myself falling through the air down this long tunnel and it was getting hotter and hotter. And then I landed on a stone floor in an actual prison cell in hell. Rough hewn stone walls, bars, filthy, stinking, dirty prison cell, but like a dungeon. And I wondered, how did I get here? Why am I here? I was fully awake and cognizant. I looked up and I saw these two enormous beasts in the cell, these demons, reptilish in appearance, bumps and scales all over the one's body, huge jaw, sunken in eyes, claws about a foot long, and they were pacing in this cell like a vicious, caged animal. And they had the most ferocious demeanor about them. They had an extreme hatred for God. They were blaspheming and cursing God. And then they had this hatred they directed towards me. The one picked me up, threw me into the wall of this prison cell. I hit the wall. I felt like bones had broken. Even though a spirit doesn't have bones, it felt that way. I collapsed on the floor. And I wondered, how could it be alive through this? Okay, I'm going to stop there. He continues to go on and to describe that the demons, the way he describes it, it's as if the demons are actually running hell. It's like he's landed in a place that's run by demons, that's run by Satan. And this is one of the ways you can find, decipher and, and break through to the truth when you hear stories like this. How do they describe hell? Now, he describes hell as a place where Satan is as though it's Satan's kingdom and he's ruling it and his, his demons are waging war on people who were believers and torturing them and, and making fun of them. He also goes on to say that the demons would laugh at him and point at him. I mean, but what does the scripture say? Okay. Matthew 25, 41 says that hell is prepared for the devil and his angels. Okay. Hell is prepared for them. Hell is for them. It's not a place where they're going to rule and sinners are sent there to be tortured by Satan and his angels. Second Thessalonians 1, 9, 1, 9 says they will suffer punishment of eternal destruction. Okay. Matthew 25, 46, hell is described as eternal punishment. He talks about there being a ground where uh, he fell and then there was a cell. Okay. Hell is also described as being Revelation 14, 11 says their torment goes up forever and ever and they have no rest day and night. OK, if they have no rest, how do they have time to torture anyone? See, see, people see, see, this is see, this is the lie. He claims that he was being tortured and it was the demons that were dishing it out. But the scriptures say that they were cast into the lake of fire. OK, the demons. That hell was a place created for the devil and his angels. And if you go to hell, it's because you are like one of his angels. I was really compelled when I first heard this story. Because of its nature, because it sounds so amazing. But, I, but the reason I make this video is because people like this make up stories like this to sell books. I mean, he's sold... I don't know how many books he's made a fortune off of this story alone. He's created a business around this, this story, 23 minutes in hell dot org, uh, where he has people donating all across the world over this false story. OK, then he at the end of the story, he wakes up and he's sitting in his living room convulsing. He's going to have to answer. And I mean, you can find videos like this all over YouTube where people have these false testimonies or a guy died and, and, you know, he was on an operating table and, and, and God was standing behind him and 
sitting in, sitting in a chair and he had to talk with God and you know God you know just was laughing continuously and they were joking it's just just foolish stories and these videos have millions of views millions of views okay but none of them are biblical okay and one guy said that uh, he died and Jesus told him when he was going to return and he asked him why would you tell me and not your son and he said oh because you're you're, you're a different type of spec I mean it's just stupid but people believe these stories and you want to know why they believe them because they want to believe it okay these are people who do not hold to scripture they don't like the Bible they don't like searching scripture for truth they want these uh, these uh, you know whimsical stories that they can cling to okay why because they're still living through the flesh they're lost that's why these things are compel them um, so yeah I just want to talk about that this man Bill Wise is going to have to answer on a day of judgment for this lie he's going to stand before the throne of God and he's gonna to have to answer for this uh, he's gonna to have to answer for the way he used the money that he got based off of this story the big old house he I mean he lives in a humongous house him and his wife uh, he's nothing more than a prosperity preacher. He's just another one of those. Now, the interesting thing about him is he does seem to know scripture, and I think he's used that to, val to, to be some type of validation. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he will have to answer on the Day of Judgment for this lie. And again, I pose a question to people who come out with these type of stories. This doesn't help anyone, okay? This false dream or experience you've had it helps no one but what it does do is it lifts you up and it allows you to be placed on a pedestal that will therefore allow you to create an organization around you that can garner you wealth and that's what he's done so that's really all I want to say thank you for listening